In Good Shape, your health magazine on DW, featuring an interview with a different expert every week. A topic eczema, the never-ending itch. That's what we talk about today with our studio guest, Dr. Philipp Rieberger from Berlin. Hello and welcome to In Good Shape. Hello. Isn't it amazing? We can fly to the moon, we can transplant the heart and even build artificial hearts, but we can't stop the skin from itching. Why is that? That's true. We all know where the moon is, so that seems fairly easy where to go. But we don't really know where the itch comes, comes from. We have several causes of itch, for example, um, internal diseases such as diabetes or uh, kidney diseases, but also infectious diseases as chickenpox. We all know how much there is itch when we have chickenpox. And of course, there's a lot of um, dermatological diseases like atopic eczema that cause a lot of itch. There's many aspects to it, and we haven't really completely understood all the aspects. And we can, can only treat certain parts, and that's why it makes it so hard to treat. But, but do you know where the atopic eczema comes from? Is it genetic? There is a big genetic component. We know that um, from studies, we know if um, there is um, one parent suffering from atopic eczema, about 20 to 40 percent of the children will be also, or the risk is that the 20 to 40 percent will be also affected with um, atopic uh, right. eczema. And if both parents do suffer from neurodermatitis, then it's also about 80 percent that the children will also be affected with neurodermatitis. So there's really a strong genetic component. And, and why is it that there are more children um, getting neurodermatitis than adults are getting it? Um, this has to do something with the immune system because the immune system isn't used to triggers and um, that is why the body needs to get used to it. So usually um, atopic eczema kind of flares up in youth, but usually fades away in adulthood. So they can outgrow it. Exactly, that's what happens. Which is actually good news. We got a view question from New Zealand. Solbjörg Björk Vins Dottir from New Zealand told us that her son has atopic eczema. And now he has hay fever too, which is an allergic reaction, it's an allergy. So is there um, some connection between atopic eczema and allergies? Indeed, there is. Um, we know that many patients develop hay fever after they have uh, suffered from neurodermatitis. They can also come together. And um, some patients also develop um, asthma afterwards or together, um, which the whole thing is called um, the atopic march because um, they develop one disease after the other. It's march like uh, marching around. Exactly. Okay, because they go together. We just saw the patient in the report and uh, she told us that her symptoms get worse when she's stressed. Why is that? There's a strong correlation between the uh, psyche and the neurodermatitis. This comes also from history. We know neurodermatitis is um, part of this is Latin coming from the nerves. So there's one link and we know that in the embryogenesis also when we kind of develop in the mother womb, um, there's embryogenic layers and the layer where the brain and the skin develop from are the same. So there's a strong link and together. There's a lifelong them. connection between it. Okay. Dialysis for skin condition. This is very new to me. What do you think about this new method? It seems to be a very, fairly reasonable approach and I think it could help, but it's probably not um, the therapy for most patients because this is only for severe patients or uh, severe atopic eczema. So, so, so what actually is the standard treatment? Well, one of the basics is maintaining a good skin hydration. That means that the patient has to use ointments or um, creams on a daily basis, even twice a day, and he has to find out what he likes and use it really frequently. And, and should the patient go and see the doctor to get some prescription for this ointment or is it okay just to go into a supermarket and get something he likes? Well, um, as I said, the basis is just any um, ointment, which is good. But if there's a flare up, you should probably see a doctor and there's the need of using a treatment like cortisone, for example. But, but on the other hand, you have to cream the skin um, every day, even if there's no flare up. Exactly. This is a continuous therapy because 
uh, the skin of a patient with neurodermatitis has a tendency to dry out. So it has to be moisturized. So, so, so what about the cortisone? You just talked about this, um, but there are many side effects of cortisone. Okay. If you use it on, on a good regimen by a doctor, there shouldn't be any side effects. Uh, side effects can come up if you use it too frequently or a strong uh, um, therapy mm -hmm. in a part that is very sensitive. So then we can see that the skin gets thinner or that there's bruising or uh, dilatation of the vessels. But there are medications outside there uh, uh, which don't contain cortisone, the new treatments. Exactly, that's the uh, calcineurin inhibitors. Oh. They have similar effects, same strength as the steroids, okay. but they don't seem to have the um, side effects of it. So they're generally used uh, widely, but you have to be uh, cautious of side effects when you give it systemically, not for neurodermatitis, but other diseases there has uh, been seen a higher risk of lymphoma or skin cancer. Wow, and you don't want to get that. No. Um, we got a, a viewer question from Amalik Nukato from Greenland and from Nala Rosenschmidt from Namibia and both want to know what about sun exposure and if you go to a tanning saloon, is it okay and does it make the symptoms worse or does it even improve the healing? Generally spoken, UV light or light is immunosuppressant so that is a good part uh, in treating also uh, neurodermatitis. But you have to be cautious because you don't really know what kind of UV dose comes out of a tanning bed or out of the sun. So it is a good reason to use medical sunlight, UV, um, narrow band uh, treatment. And that seems to work well with a lot of patients. And the medical sunlight you get where? At, at the doctor's office? At the doctor's office. At the usually. dermatologist's exactly. office, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yong Tang from Hong Kong says that relaxation exercises have really helped her cut down flare-ups. What do you think about that? Well. Um, there is, uh, we talked about that earlier, the combination of psyche and neurodermatitis. And I think, in my experience, patients really do profit from um, methods like this. So like it's yoga. always good to get some relaxation and the itch can stop then. Thank you, Dr. Ribaga, for being with us in the studio today. Thank you so much. <laughs>